Good day and thank you for joining CivilNet. Today we'll be talking with Iranian uh, filmmaker, director, writer, producer, Puriya Hederi Ure, uh, and in particular with his, uh, about his latest movie, one of his latest films, right? Uh, uh, the Apricot Grove, which is, was produced in Armenia, filmed in Armenia in 2016. However, we haven't heard much about it. We haven't seen it. Well, I have in a private screening today, earlier in the day, but I think that w that is it, right? Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Uh, your film is kind of uh, touching a lot of sore spots, very p peculiar to what's happening to the whole industry in Armenia. Uh, so many questions, but first of all, uh, it's produced in Armenia. It's, we can easily say that's a film made in Armenia. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And then yes, 100% Armenian production. Uh, we made it in Armenia, we made it with official organization of Armenia and it's just the post-production section happened in Iran like, and maybe like we had only one scene in Iran, the rest was filmed in here. Uh, most of the crew and actors are from Armenia and it's in Armenian language. So for the viewers, as I didn't know what your film was about, maybe you can just give a synopsis of what film is about. Uh, as you watch it, and it's a kind of a surprise ending film, so uh, in general, if I don't want to like tell you the whole story... It of course, no spoilers, but maybe a little for just It's the a viewers. romance, and like my any other uh, previous films that they were short films, it has a social issues. But this time the issues are between two neighbor countries and mostly the, con the neighbor countries that they have different religions, they're always facing these problems, not like uh, in governmental problem, but like people. Intercultural. Yes. yes. And the romance is like usually when there are two people with two different religions, they want to get married, they're always facing a lot of problems. So. But that's also kind of a side story, that's not yes. your main story. But we are talking about all of them in the same story, actually. And it combined of three true stories that happened to my friends, and I combined it in one film and shoot it in Armenia. So is it okay if I give a little bit more spoilers, contact, context into what, what we're talking about? Maybe you should. Please, I'm going to push you a little bit more, but tell about the, the plot. Actually, it's, uh, the main character is Aram. He's an Iranian-Armenian guy that is coming. Uh, he moved from Armenia to States from childhood and he never been in Armenia for like 25 years. And he's coming back after 25 years. And his brother was here the whole time. So they're going to a marriage proposal to a lady that he was met in States and they were together for five years and she's an Armenian. So, uh, that's the one day journey that is coming to Armenia and go to a marriage proposal and at the end is what I cannot tell you actually. Yes, at the end uh, it's a beautiful ending. It's kind of the beginning rather than the ending if, if I may kind of conclude that. Uh, what was the what's the reason why haven't we heard about this film or I, I also should tell our viewers and your film has been been in more festivals than any other film in Armenia ever. Or probably that's most probably true, or it's probably in the top two of... You've been in 22 festivals? Or going so to? So far, yeah. Uh, we've been in four. We have uh, 18 more invitations. We have eight in March, eight festivals in March. And uh, we still have any like, other invitations that uh, we are talking to the festivals right now because of the premieres of the countries. So yes, uh, I tried to search everywhere. I think uh, I couldn't find any other movie that they got into that much film festivals. Or I'm pretty sure maybe we are in top five. That's for sure. In, in any case, 22 so far yeah, is a very impressive number. And we've been in really good film festivals. We premiered in Montreal Born Film Festival. Uh, we have invited in Athens Video Film Festival in Ohio, which is an Oscar-qualified film festival for short film section. And uh, 
uh, we have invitations in Rain Dance Film Festival, and the rest of the festivals are just as good as this one's like Nashville Film Festival states. Uh, we've been in Sufia Mena Film Festival in Bulgaria. We've been in Mons Film Festival in Belgium. What's, what's, what's the general reaction from the public that sees your film? Uh, usually they really, uh, like, the thing they have in common, they really like the Armenia, like, whoever talked with us, right, like, they have some question about the story and the film, and then all the question goes, like, we want to come to Armenia. And I'm like, come to Armenia. <laughs> and well, like, there was such a beautiful introduction to the country with all the driving scenes also uh, in the uh, city. We try to do that, and, uh, but the main problem is, like, we made this film with National Cinema Center of Armenia, and this is what you do when you go to other country to make movie. You usually go to official organization to make a film, and that's what we did. And uh, this is actually the right thing to do in any other country you go. So we went there, we gave them our script, and they read it. They said they really liked it, and we started making the movie. When we finished the movie, they told us that we are not allowed to put their name in our film, which is like, Maybe, like, uh, if we were doing it in any other countries, they would have put it in the contract that you have to put our name in the beginning and end of the film. So, when the movie finished, uh, which they supposed to support us for screening the film in the theaters and uh, introduce us to the local film festivals, and this has never happened. And well, that's what the role of the National Cinema Center so a, an institute like that would be, right? To kind of support the yeah. viewings, organize, make sure that the film... Otherwise, we could have done it with some other independent companies or we just could have done it by our own selves. And uh, we just tried to do it with National Cinema Center, so maybe they can support us. And When you were talking about support, are we talking about financial support? Are we so talking no, organizational no, no, support, uh, PR support, logistics made, support? We made our film with our own money. Uh, we have a small film company and there's two investors that we have. We just did it with our own money. We didn't get nothing from Cinema Center. We just even paid them for licensing and for some of the crew. and. Uh, We've been a good customer, I mean, we paid on time and we finished the movie on time, but at the end uh, we faced some censorships that we just made the movie as exact the script we gave to them. And when we finished the movie, they became a bit some things that I really don't want to talk about it because it was really like, it doesn't make sense. Like, Did I see the censored version today? No, I didn't do any censors, like, because... But, okay, so do you think it's the subject matter that threw them off? Uh, yes. Do you think, can, can I disclose that one of the characters in the film is going through the process of gender reassignment? Yes, and the problem is, okay, you know, uh, like, in my own country, we're facing a lot of censorships, but we know the red lines. Like, I mean, there are something out there and you can study them. So if you do them, you know what you've done and you are okay with it. But like, here I just gave them my script. They have enough time to read it. And if like the issue was that big, they, they should have told us that you cannot make this movie in Armenia. And we would have do something else. I mean, like anyway, I would have made the movie like somehow, but uh, but why did you choose Armenia? Your characters are of Armenian origin, uh, Armenian. Uh, you talk about Iranian being Iranian Armenian versus Armenian from Armenia. You talk about religious differences. You, you talk about this. And it sounds like you really very much understand what all these subtleties are about. The thing with Armenia is like, um, you know, uh, I had a lot of Armenian friends from childhood, like we grown up with them in Iran, like we have a lot of Iranian Armenians, so like even though when I was coming and going to this country, I never felt like a foreigner because I was knowing these people like from the beginning of my life. And the reason that I was traveling a lot in Armenia was like my best friend when we finished high school, he moved to Armenia and I went to Cyprus and because of the military problems, he couldn't come back to Iran. So I was come and visit him here every year, like twice or three times. 
And sometimes uh, in summer I would have stayed like for two months. So like in past 10 years, maybe I came here like, I don't know, more than like So when you were times. writing the script, you had specifically Armenia in mind or could, no, could no, you just adapt like, it to take place any other place? Like, for example, with the same issues or same kind of mentality uh, differences, maybe Georgia could have been another thing or the Middle East could have been another option. Uh, was it Armenia specific or uh, it could be? The thing is like, uh, I told you it's the combine of three true stories. And uh, one of the main persons that I adopted the film from his life was an Armenian friend of mine. So when I came here, I just uh, see some other things like, uh, for example, like I never knew there is too many different Armenians and like I didn't know there are Syrian Armenians. I never knew there's Lebanese Armenians and uh, I never knew any of these. And when I was coming and going and I was talking with people, I get in too many like love stories happened in the same version. Like there was like this, Armenian Christian guy and he had like this Iranian Muslim girlfriend or the other way around and they were a lot. One of the actors we have in the movie, he was facing the same thing and like the families, they, could, they didn't let them to get married. Oh, so though it didn't have a very happy ending, not no. the film. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> so that was like a big concern for me. So why should it be like that? There's two neighbor countries and like they have no problem, like people, they have no problem with, uh, with each other. And uh, the only thing that they're in the way in some of them to like get together was the religious. And, and there is no, um, how can I say, there is no uh, alternative or anything that they could do about it. So it's going to be a separation for no reason. For no reason, like, uh, I don't know, the religious should come to make people live easier and happier. But right now, it's doing the different thing. The quite opposite. It's, yes. there, it's kind of sometimes making things more complicated. So, uh, you expected the film to be screened in Armenia some time ago already? Or are you waiting for, let's say, maybe the Golden Apricot Festival or some other festival? Uh, Have you applied? What, was, what, what were your plans with the film for Armenia? First of all, I wanted to screen it in theaters. And because of the number of production that the country makes each year, which is not more than four or five films. That's on the best, best yes. year, right? I thought I really have a good chance and they really want to do that. But the, all the cinemas here are private. And when they're private, they have to right to choose what film they want to screen. But uh, we have a good cast, so I thought the cinemas would love my film. And after we got to the film festivals, I thought, OK, maybe now they will be more interested in it. But the thing is, like, rather than I give to some of the cinemas and they reply to me that they really like the film, but they cannot screen it, and one of them came to me, they were like, it's because of the subject, and we think, like, our audience wouldn't accept the subject. And the other one, they didn't give me an answer, like, ah, we don't have time to screen it. And I said, okay, there should be a time, okay, tell me after three years, like, there must be a time, like, like in any other countries, like they have like a timetable for local films. Yes. They have to be that. I don't know, like just screen it like nine o'clock in the morning. But to screen it. But uh, I think that was the issue of the subject. And the problem is like, I don't blame them because, you know, even in any other country that you want to screen your film, you have to get approval from I don't know, uh, cultural center, national cinema center, film commissions, whatever it is there, they have to confirm your film that, okay, this film is okay to be screened. And then cinemas, then they have right to choose it. Like, if they told me, like, we don't like this film, or this is not a good film. So that process, you went through that process in Armenia, you went to the national cinema center, all the, uh, yes. From the beginning, like, before we start the movie, we just directly went to national cinema center of Armenia. They got a script, they were really happy with it. We started yeah. making the film. There was a lot of trouble that they were making for us during the shooting. Julia, but, but do you think the Armenian viewers ready for your film? Because it's touching a lot of sore spots. Well, as you said, every other person, probably a lot, or every other person knows someone who knows someone who's been through 
one or the other of the narratives that are in, in your film, do you think the, the viewer is ready? Because at this point, the viewers, I think not only in Armenia generally, is going for com comedies, feel-good films, uh, romantic comedies, but uh, do you think the viewer is ready to kind of sit down and look back into its own reality? Uh, the thing is, like, I cannot answer that. That's the answer that the viewers have to give us, you know. You know, uh, you never know till you, you go for it. Until, uh, yes. the, the film has to be screened, and from the people attendance and the reaction, you will find out if they're ready to accept this kind of thing or not. But the thing is, like, all over the world, like comedies or like war movies, action movies, uh, they have like the majority of the viewers, but like. Any other movies, they, they had their own viewers too. There's a niche like, viewership, yeah. There's places in Armenia, they screen documentary movies. I've been there yesterday and it was packed. Like, uh, like I was standing and watching the film. There was no place to sit. So, uh, of course, they're going to be like people that they, they might want to watch the film. And uh, anyway, like... I don't want to keep saying that, but how many movies do we make in Armenia? Like, you know, it's like this year it's been like four or five. And we have to have a chance to screen the film that we made in Armenia. Like, you know, that's, that's the, the Well, the as home someone who lives film. in Armenia, I think I really want to see what's being made in Armenia, at least given the chance to see it. And uh, we have a Facebook page and uh, on other social medias. Uh, we're getting a lot of interest, like the people they're contacting us, not only in Armenia, like Armenians in any other countries, like they were in this organization in Australia, they asked us to screen the film there. Like there is Armenian organization in Los Angeles, they really want to screen the film in cinemas, like they want to distribute it. And even here from Armenia, like still even my close much. friends, they keep asking for like, can you send us a DVD or something we want to watch it? And I, can't, I keep telling them, we're going to screen it in theaters. But all is not lost, right? There's still a chance that sooner or later, hopefully sooner, it will come to cinemas in Army or there will be some screenings in, in, in Actually, Armenia. like, um, you know, the cinema center is closed right now. I don't know for what the reason is, but like, it's not there anymore. But, uh, uh, I heard some good news and I met the new Ministry of Culture, Mr. Amirion. We had a meeting and I think most of the things with culture and cinema are going to change in Armenia. I'm really happy for that and there is this new head of the Film Commission that coming and he's uh, creating the F Armenian Film Commission in the proper way because I had a meeting with him and like uh, this guy has a plan and hopefully like he can support our film and any other Armenian products because even like uh, I've seen like really good Armenian films before making my own films and I was shocked that some years like uh, if I want to mention you the name of one of the film it was like Moscow which my love and I watched the movie, I really liked the film. It was a really good film. It was well directed and shot. It has like really good local story. Everything was fine with the film. And I was shocked in the same year that this movie wasn't in foreign language Oscar section as Armenian film. Well, I've never heard about the film. And, and they uh, didn't give any other films. Like, I mean, like they rather not giving any films than that one. That was like, I was shocked. And then I found out like, they don't really care or like they don't know how to do it because like cinema center like for last like 12 years they give maybe like three films or four films to academy awards and uh, they didn't distribute very well any other films like well we let's hope things get better soon uh, because I, hope, I, I think it's gonna I, get better because yes. like the, the, the new people coming are they're different like yes the filmmakers, they know like... Because now the, the filmmaker business. himself or herself is doing most of the things yeah. that initially filmmakers probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm uh, assuming here, didn't because you take control of your own distribution, yeah. you, you do more than 
filmmakers before you used to do. Especially in Armenia, when under the Soviet rule, it was more of the state that took control of where your film went, how it was distributed, where it was shown, how many times. So now it's also kind of the artist, not only the filmmaker, yeah, like has, got, has to follow up with that. You know, like from the beginning of the film, we've been the producer, we financed the movie, uh, I wrote the movie, I directed the movie. So is this kind of like a gift, ready gift to Armenian cinema and so no one's picking it up? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to say that because like, there was a lot of like, Armenian artists involved in the film and they really helped us. I mean, like, uh, our actors like Samba Sarkisian, like, like any festivals we go, they ask for him. Like, and he really helped us. Or Araik, he gave us a lot of tips about Armenian cultures that we added in the script. Uh, Mara Hakupian, she helped us a lot for developing the story. And uh, Hofanes Azoyan, he was like, he was supportive. He was like always bringing new ideas to the films. And like our composers, our set decorators, our custom designers, they were all Armenians and they did a lot to the film. So, uh, Armenian artists actually helped the film a lot, but like the but other the industry people, didn't yes, pick it up. Probably the people that they supposed to uh, distribute, advertise, and support the film, they did nothing, and not just they did nothing, they stopped our film. Like uh, they well, they just uh, asked me for a lot of censorship, and they didn't give me any proper censorship paper because they have to be like a paper with the logo of National Cinema Center of Armenia, and they supposed to say okay from minute one till minute two, you have to take this out because of this. And we have a request for that and they didn't accept it. They, they never like show up in the public places with us so nobody maybe found out that we were working together. We had a private screening right after we finished the film. We invite them, nobody showed up from National Cinema Center. And uh, nothing, they were just like, after we finished the movie, it was only roadblocks from National Cinema Center, nothing else. And like I well, even I, I was hope that changes soon, and I hope Armia is not content with producing, and that a lot of that is due to personal hard work and determination. That there are at least five, six films coming out of Armenia each year, at least this year, I think, last year, and uh, I hope I hope to see you film again. But this time, not in a private, uh, during a private screening officially. I hope a lot of people will see it. And best of luck with the, with the festivals. Uh, and you. we also thank our viewers for joining us. And uh, it's, it's this encouraging when sometimes you read about films. You, you read their names, you read their descriptions, and you see the trailers and don't have the chance to watch them. So if it comes to your town, please go and check these Armenian films out. Uh, and I hope they come to Armenia as well. Mm -hmm.